Hey guys, hi. Thanks for, thanks for your time. My name is Asim, uh, and uh, I'm co-founder of Give.Asia. It's a crowdfunding platform which is used by different charities uh, across Asia to raise funds. We've raised about, uh, about $30 million for different causes. Uh, it was started in 2009 when I was studying in NUS. Uh, the other company which I started is called Givola Labs, uh, which, which was actually a byproduct of the first company. I, I think uh, I've seen this trend that generally when you start companies, you start companies as byproducts of other companies. So when we started GiveAsia, we, we were essentially a social enterprise. We didn't really have a very strong business model. And uh, in those early days, it was quite hard for us to hire developers or designers in Singapore. So we, we did what you know, a lot of startups would do. They started firing. Uh, they started finding outsourced talent. They started finding people in other countries, which might be a little bit cheaper. And in that process of uh, working with uh, software developers in, in you know, Eastern European countries and places like Poland, Vietnam, uh, Russia, uh, we kind of got good at remote work. And, uh, Last year, we started getting approached by a lot of companies, a lot of startups who were like, hey, it seems like uh, you, know, you guys know how to do remote work. Can you help us with something similar? And that's when we started the company. And uh, just in one year, we have been quite fortunate to work with a lot of companies. So that's why I'm, I just want to share experiences of how we have seen remote work to work. And hopefully, you will have some uh, you know, ideas or things that might be useful for you. So just before I uh, get into it, I just want to get a you know, brief idea of uh, the audience here. So just going to ask a few questions. So how many people here work in startups? All right, so we have a couple. Uh, how, how many people travel uh, every day to work, uh, let's say, half an hour in aggregate? Uh, one hour? Two hours? All right, so, okay. so one hour is kind of the place. Uh, how, how many people uh, here think that when you are working at your workplace, sometimes there are people who kind of you know, tap you on your shoulder or you know, say something and kind of bring you out of the zone? Right? So we, we have a few hands. Uh, it, it takes time to kind of get back into the zone once you're out of the zone. Uh, the, the other thing is, how many people here really believe that you can do, uh, I, I guess you probably do eight hours or nine, 10 hours of work every day, right? Around eight hours, like that's what we say. How many of you think you actually do eight hours of work? <laughs> right. So, 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 so these are these are just some of the insights, and like you know, you take that insight and then you try to crystallize it, and you say that okay, here's here's what I know. I'm traveling maybe half an hour to one hour, maybe a couple of hours every day. There are some places where people travel like one hour to work, one hour back from work. Uh, it's it's not productive. Like you're you're losing that time. Second thing, you're not, you're not really working eight hours. Probably you're working like, if I were to be asked like how much do I work, I track these things, so I probably work like four hours a day. Uh, because that's, that's the real amount of work I get then. The, the rest of the time is like, you know, thinking about where to go for lunch, or you know, it's like, okay, it's you know, about to end, or someone like, you know, talking to you about their you know, s social problems or whatever it is, right? Uh, and, and, and the third thing to, third thing to think about is, uh, uh, the, the whole fact I talked about, like, you know, you can put your headphones on, but if, you know, someone has a question, they will come in and they say, hey, I have this idea. I have this perfect idea which is going to change your, change your startup or change the organization. And then you, you kind of think to yourself, no, I've, I've thought of that. I, I don't really think it's that game changer of an idea. Uh, but you can't say no to the person. You have to listen to him. So you take that into account. Here's, here's what we found. Remote work is good for a few reasons. First, first reason is asynchronous com communication. What that means is when people say something or they talk something, there are a few things happen. First, uh, it, it, it gets written down somewhere. So this could be Slack, this could be an email. And here's the funny thing about writing. When you're writing, uh, you just can't write without thinking. Right? Like, but when you're talking, you can talk. Like, that's what I'm doing. You can talk without thinking, right? You can just say whatever it is. But when you're writing, you know there are consequences, right? You know that you can be, people can keep you accountable for it. You can go back to it and say that, you know, this is what you said. So this is super important. What we see in remote work is that, you know, it forces clients or it forces uh, developers, it forces everyone who's involved to think through. And, and that's good. And you need times of, you need like blocks of time for you to think. Uh, for you to think about hard problems. I'm, I'm assuming all of us here, or most of us here, I, I think all of us here are knowledge workers. You know, we, are not, we are not doing things where you increase the amount of time our output is going to increase. It's, it's knowledge work. That's where you want to have like zone of time where you can work on creative stuff. So I think this is pretty big, which is just being, having asynchronous, uh, asynchronous communication, which is a big deal in remote work. The other thing is feedbacks. So 
Uh, I'm sure most of you are working in office. Uh, let me ask you this. What is the structured feedback, uh, feedback process that you have in your workplace? Uh, some people call it performance management system. Some people call it like you know feedback. They have these things every one year, every six months, every quarter. So let's let let me ask you a quick question. How many people here get feedback every week? How many people get feedback every month? How many? Uh, it can be either. Like how many people get uh, feedback every month? How many people get feedback every quarter? One, two. How many people get feedback every six months? One. How many people get feedback every one year? All right, so, so the rest of them probably don't get any feedback. <laughs> so so, so, so here's, here's what I found out, like, you know, working in uh, office culture. I, I realized that the, the fact that you only have your performance management systems probably every year is a big problem. Because, you know, you spend that one year thinking that you are you're kicking ass, you're, like, you're, you're, you're doing amazing things for the company. And after one year, you find out that actually people think you were not doing your job. And you're like, really? Is that true? Like, I thought I was a superstar, right? And, and then you're told, no, no, you've not been doing your job. And it's like, OK, and why didn't you tell me earlier? You know, it just, it just doesn't make sense. You pay someone lots of money. You, 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 you get them to work, and then you don't tell them until one year in that you know, they, are, they are not performing to the level you want them to perform. So feedback, and, and this is a little bit of a counterintuitive point. I think when we are in the same location, we, we just assume that you know, feedback is there. But if you don't have a process, it's almost, like, it's almost like you are a fish who's in the water, and you've got so accustomed to like, you know, water that you just don't realize it's water. So it's almost like in office, you feel like feedback is there. It's omnipresent, but it's not present because you're not doing it. Uh, and so what we do at Remote, like you know, what we are doing in our organization, is that we are getting feedback every week. So every week you will find out from you know, your clients or from people you're working with what they liked about you, what they, what they disliked about your work, how can you improve it. And, and that is a huge, huge, uh, I would say, uh, reason that keeps people engaged because they are satisfied. You know, it's not that uh, the feedback is always going to be positive; it will be negative. But that's what you want. You know, that's that's the feedback loop that you know keeps you engaged at your job. So that's something which you know we feel is very important, and that's why every week, uh, all the people who are working in our teams, we have about 25 people all across the globe. They will have to you know do a self evaluation. They have to talk about what they did that week. Are they happy with it? What are the things they can improve? And then there will be a performance review by other people who work for them who will give the same thing. And, and we find out that you know, this has been a huge, huge uh, advantage to people. Uh, the other thing I would say is autonomy. So, so when it comes to knowledge work, I think autonomy is a really important thing. Uh, when, when you are doing your work and there are people always uh, watching you know, behind your shoulders, always like, you know, uh, kind of intervening, it's not fun. Uh, and when when you are uh, working remotely, you're kind of you're kind of uh, making the decision on your own. You are saying that okay, I'm going to be working for this many hours, and this is what you can expect at the end of the day. And it's a very clear contract. And then you build confidence. I think it's something which you have to do over time. So we have engineers now who once they say that they're going to get something done, let's say in a week's time or in a month's time, we have worked with them enough to know that they will somehow manage their time and they will get the job done. And so we don't intervene. We, we let them do the things you know, the way they want to do. And it's not uncommon where people, so we have, we have guys in Russia who will like, you know, go, to, go to Bali with their, with their family or with their, with their kids or with their wives. And you know, they will have complete autonomy. We don't really care you know, where you are. It's, you can be location free. Uh, one, of, one, of the problems with, one of the problems with working in office is that people always think that if you're in office, work is getting done. That's why, that's why a lot of people, like, you know, when they, there are a lot of people who go to work really early, and they put their, like, you know, they put their coat or they put their bag there, and then they go to Starbucks. Just, just so that if anyone you know, looks at their desk, they know that, oh, the person is, the person has, you know, is at work. You know, he's working. His stuff is there. It's not that he hasn't showed up. So, 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 so I think there, there is the cultural aspects. And also, I think in Singapore, I've heard from friends who mentioned that you, know, you can't really leave until your boss leaves. So, so you are, you're at your office, and you know, you've done your work, but your boss hasn't left because you know, he just takes so long to get his job done. Uh, you know, and, and because of that, you have to stay there. So, so in, my, in my mind, like, you know, that's a waste of time. The other thing I would say is uh, 
like you know, it is it is very important to have mastery in whatever knowledge work you're doing. And what we have found is that this feedback is a huge reason for you to you know get the mastery because you know if you're doing well or not. And also, you can own your learning. Uh, I think another another thing which a lot of organizations don't get right is that they underinvest in training. So uh, you know that's training is absolutely I would say the number one thing which any company could be doing to improve outcomes. Uh, if you are training your staff, uh, you are getting better and better. So. Uh, remote work does help with that because you know you're saving those one or two hours every day that you were uh, you know spending on travel. What if you could spend those one or two hours you know into you know being on Coursera or like you know reading a book about you know what you're interested in? Uh, it will show in your work, in your craft, uh, getting improved. So so that's another thing we we really highly value, and that's something which everyone in our company needs to do. Uh, the, the the last thing I would mention before we just open it up, uh, you know, for Q and A is uh, essentially this, uh, this, whole, this, whole, this whole idea of how we are competing at a global scale now. Uh, so if you're talking about you uh, yourself being a developer, you're no longer competing with developers in Singapore, you're competing with developers in Ukraine and Russia. And, and uh, once you start uh, working remotely, you realize that the world is your oyster. Uh, if we were to talk about the kind of clients and kind of uh, you know, uh, uh, remote workers we are working with, we are working with people all, all across the globe. We have, we have developers in Russia, in Ukraine, in uh, Vietnam, in India, and you know, all over the place. And I, I think sometimes, I, or actually a lot of times, I like working with them more uh, because they are hungrier. And uh, you know they 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 put in more hours. They 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 are very autonomous because they have that's the culture they have known. They have been doing remote work for almost like five years, ten years for clients across the globe. So they have seen more things. They have been exposed to more problems, and uh, that's that's what they understand. They understand the future of world is project based. It's it's not it's not specifically a company-based profession. You don't go into a company and you stay with the company for the rest of your life, but you hop from projects to projects, and your learning is optimized when you take part in different projects. So last last uh, one year, our our team has worked on fintech, we have worked on e-commerce, we have worked on logistics, and we've worked on so many different projects, and that's where you know the learning has been. And you find that these people are really fast at taking these learnings from one project and applying to other projects, which in certain organizations, if you're just in one organization, you might not have that. Because you learn what that organization knows, but the, the growth stops because you haven't seen other projects. So uh, with that, I'll just, like, you know, I'll just open, the, open the floor for any discussion, any feedback, any questions that you might have. Yes. Environments can be improved a lot. Uh, one uh, point that I might offer in this defense is, uh, is the work ethic that it cultivates. Uh, so, for example, like when I go to like, a petition, like, this is a place where I work, and yeah. I, I, I have like this is a place to be distracted, yeah. and that's where I get work done. And yeah. it's like it's a it's a daily process that this gets me into the into that zone. Yeah. Uh, and okay, maybe you can distract me, right? But office layouts can be arranged in the way that yeah. there's a problem. Yeah. But what I want to say is that there's a there's component work ethic that like, officers are pretty good at. So how do you so like in terms of getting in terms of instilling and like the discipline and the work ethic, how do you propose like getting people work to like, reach that? Sure. What what I've seen what I've seen with uh, people who work as remote workers is that you know there are two types. There are one type who are like I would say amateurs, like who who, who don't follow that work ethic, who kind of like are not following it. And there's other ones who are really pro. So so we 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 go through the pros and like you know they would have in their place a room which is their workplace and like you know and the door is closed you know babies can't walk in or you know pets can't walk in they have like high definition you know cameras so that they can have the Skype calls and like you know they have the equipment. All right, this time. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. The fire alarm has been activated in the building. We are investigating the situation. Please remain calm and stand by for further instruction. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, please. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. The fire alarm has been activated in the building. We are investigating the situation. 
Please remain calm and stand by for further instruction. Thank you. Now is the time. Go. <laughs> Do you always work with individuals or you sometimes work with small teams? Uh, yeah, so, so what we have seen is uh, we have sometimes teams. Uh, it's again going back to the same question. You want these people who really have work ethics, so not thinking of uh, you know working remotely as uh, you know. There, there is some bullshit out there which is like you know I'm your, I'm my own boss, like I can do whatever, whatever because you know I'm remote and all that. I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about people who are serious about their job. Uh, when we form a good team of these guys. We'd like to we like them to be together because uh, you know they they have an inbuilt chemistry. Uh, so we do work with some teams as well who we take from uh, team by team. I mean they are physically team, not remote. Team. We, we 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 are focused on remote. So so we, we we all the people we have are all remote. So all work is done remote. Yes. What are some downsides of remote? Um, sure. Uh, one one of the one of the downsides that we we find is that uh, it's it's maybe a little bit harder earlier on to like you know figure out if this person is going to perform or not. It takes a little bit longer because you know when you meet in person face to face, uh, maybe it's easier for you to uh, to judge it. But for us, it's always been like we have to work with the person for at least a couple of months, and then we know if it works or not. Uh, the other downside is sometimes. You, you create human connection, so so you feel like you know I, I would love to be in a place where there are other people who are working on the same same thing, and and the way we come, the way we solve that issue is that we, we do like a annual get together. So you know once a, once a year you come to the same location and then you meet all the people you work with. Uh, so so that, that would be the downside. Uh, another another upside uh, just came to my mind, which I forgot, is that when you're running a remote organization, uh, your office or uh, is not a physical space; it's online, uh, which forces you to document everything, uh, and and that's a that's a huge advantage. Uh, if you walk into a traditional organization, uh, onboarding can be really tough because nobody has really documented the things. So uh, the person who just joined the team has to find all this information from hundred different people. But if you if you join a remote organization, everything will be documented, so you can go back and you can kind of get these mini case studies of what that organization went through, why did they make certain decisions, and uh, you know that's really helpful. What do, what project management software or what kind of team collaboration software that you guys really use, and what do you think works really well for you guys? Yeah, so so we 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 tried it done, and uh, finally finally like you know we we do a lot of like our issue management and stuff on GitHub. Uh, so it's we have, we have we have started using that as like a project management tool because for us almost like you know finding Basecamp or Asana or all that for us uh, it was a bit too complicated like you know, there were so many features out there that we just couldn't pick it up so we we really like you know gone to the basics and we're just doing everything on uh, that uh, for our knowledge management there's a new new product we're using it's called Nucleino. Uh, Nucleino is a very good, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty new tool by Cognitive Startup, so that helps us with the knowledge management. So all our documents, everything goes on Nucleino. It's a, it's a wiki like, uh, platform where people can add stuff. If you heard of this uh, startup called Remote Gear? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Like your business model. Yeah. So, so there, there are a lot of, there are a lot of uh, companies which are uh, riding this wave of remote work. So, you know, there are startups like Remote Air where in one year you go to six different locations and you, uh, you, you go with like 25 people. And uh, there's another one called Jabatical where you go yeah. for a job plus sabbatical to a new country for one year and you, you know, work at something. Uh, so, so there are a lot of remote uh, focused organizations. R is more focused on. Uh, People who uh, you know are are pretty professional in what they do, developers, designers, and uh, we link them up with uh, companies who, who are looking for uh, top tier remote talent. So we don't have a travel. What kind of work you do? It it would be software what development. Oh, okay. Software. software development. It would be like design. It would be content. So yeah. I I think you know remote work can be. I would say for something like sales, you have to be on the ground. If you're doing like face-to-face -face sales, if you're doing inside sales, it can still be remote. We, what we do, I mean, I have company, we use remote uh, augmented reality for remote work. Okay. But actually, we are doing much more uh, physical work in that sense. Yeah. We are scaling up the list of uh, experts, yeah. technicians, yeah. or maybe taking a role or fixing alarms on them. So actually, we are doing remote work, but we are bringing the idea of remote work to 
real so called work so using augmented reality goggles and things like that. In Singapore we are doing this now. Yeah, right. Yes. Do you have any comments on the team sizes? Team on sizes on a specific project? Uh, so, so we are, we are not as big yet. So we still work in very small teams. We have like you know four or five people maximum working on a project. But if you are interested in how this model scales when you have bigger companies, uh, you can look at uh, uh, Automatic, which is uh, which is about four fifty employees all over the globe. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can have a large organization, but you still may want to focus smaller teams focusing on specific uh, yeah. area. Yeah, yeah. For, for for us, I think uh, we kind of follow the follow. I think it is uh, Jeff Bezos who has this thing about like if you want to build something, you have to have a team, uh, you know, big enough or small enough that it can survive on a pizza, right? So so you probably like t two pizzas, okay? Yeah. So so like you know, a maximum for five people. Beyond that, it can be quite uh, yeah quite difficult. All right. Thank you. That's the end. All right. Ladies and gentlemen. Your attention, please. We have investigated the situation. There has been a false alarm. We apologize for any inconvenience caused. Thank you. It, you have to give it to them. They, they actually tell you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. We have investigated the situation. There has been a false alarm. We apologize for any inconvenience caused. Thank you. I, I like the feedback loop. It's pretty good. <laughs> All right. Th thanks, guys. Ladies Thank and you so gentlemen, much. your attention, please.